Hello there and welcome to Solving Inequalities. Here we're going to go through two things. We're going to go through inequalities on a number line and then solving equations where, where there's an inequality symbol in the middle of them. So let's first just do quickly inequalities on a number line. So uh, just to get the ball rolling, write down five numbers that satisfy these four inequalities. Okay, so this is just making sure we uh, know what these symbols mean. If x is bigger than 8, so what it means, if you're on the left-hand side of this symbol here, then it means that uh, on the bigger side, then you uh, are going to want a value that is bigger than 8. The pointy bit is where the small number is, the bit where the uh, crocodile is eating the um, value, you want that to be the bigger item. So, for example, 8.1 would be a value that's bigger than 8, 9, 10, 8.001 might be an answer to this question, uh, but 8 is not an answer to this question. I'll go through when 8 would be an answer to this question later on, and, um, and 100 would be greater than, could be an answer for x. So any of these numbers here could be an answer for x. In the case down here on part b, this is less than or equal to. So where x is a number that is less than, the pointy bit is always pointing towards the smaller number um, or equal to it. So 4 could potentially be an answer for x. This extra little bit of information on the bottom, this uh, line on the bottom here, means that the equality could be equal to that value as well. Sometimes it's written flat along the bottom, and sometimes it's written right next to, diagonally with, the um, the line going uh, down to the right. So 4, 3, 2, 1, minus 1 could all be values for x in this case. x is a number less than minus 6, so minus 7, minus 8, minus 9, minus 10, minus 11. So think about it, these are all numbers that are getting smaller than minus 6. Um, so these are smaller numbers. Yes, they're getting bigger in the negatives, but when they get bigger in the negatives, that is actually getting smaller. And bigger than minus 2, so minus 1. Minus 2 could be an answer as well for x, because it uh, could be equal to it. 0, 1, 3, any of those numbers there could be answers for x. So just to get us used to what these symbols mean. Okay, so first question that we'll have a go at together then. Represent x is bigger than 3 on the number line. Now, we're not allowed to include 3. X, would, uh, x equals 3 is not allowed as an answer. So what we do there is we put an empty circle at 3, and then we want any number bigger than 3. So that's how we would draw it on the number line. Now, the answer, if this inequality had a equal to equality on it, then you would just colour in the circle. And that would mean that you could include 3 as one of your x values. So if we go at another one, x is bigger than or equal to 1. So in this case, we put a circle just above 1 and then colour it in. And then we've got to make sure the arrow is pointing in the right direction. The pointy bit is where the smaller part is. Anything else would be on the other side, the bigger bit. So it would point upwards. Moving on to the next one, x is less than 9, so a circle that's not filled in at 9, and then downwards because it needs to be less than. Moving on to the next one, minus 5, circle with it coloured in, and then we want it to be less than minus 5, so it would point that way. In between 2 and 9, where it could be 2, but it can't be 9, so... The 2 is circle coloured in, and then a 9 that's not coloured in. We'll connect the two together there. Moving on to the next one, minus 6. It could equal minus 6, so I'll have to colour in my circle at that point. But then up to 8, it can't be 8, so I'll just leave my circle empty, and I'll connect the two points together. Okay, so there we are. That is the summary of uh, how to colour in a number line with inequalities. Let's now move on to solving inequalities. So, uh, what we need to do here is we need to rearrange this uh, inequality just like it would uh, with an equation uh, to work out what A is. So, in this first case, I think I will take away 1 from both sides. 
and that will leave me with 4a is less than or equal to 20. And then I think I'll divide both sides by 4, divide by 4, so a is a number less than or equal to 5. I've done exactly the same things as I would with an equation, only this time it's just a different symbol in the middle of them. Let's move on to the next one. In this case I would add 3 onto both sides to move the negative onto the other side first. So 5x is greater than 35. And then divide by 5 on both sides. Divide by 5, divide by 5. And I would get x is less is bigger than 7. Exactly the same stuff as you would do with an equation, just as a different symbol in the middle. This time I would add 4 to both sides. So on this side add 4, on this side add 4. So I'd get 10 is less than or equal to 5x. And then divide both sides by 5, divide by 5. And I would get 2 is less than or equal to x. And just for personal preference, I think I'll switch everything around. So switch the numbers around and flip the symbol the other way around. x is a number bigger than 2. And it's generally better to write your x first and then less than or bigger than uh, a number on the other side. So this would be the final answer. Moving on to the next one, I think because there's a negative on this side here, I'd add it to the other side. Add 2x, add 2x. So I'd get 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 9. Take away the 3 from both sides and you get 6. And then divide by 2 on both sides and you get x is less than or equal to 3. Good, so whenever you've got a negative such as we've got here, add it onto the other side and then just rearrange as normal. Moving on to the next one, let's evaluate the x's. I have 3x here and a minus 2x here. First thing I would do in this question is to move the smaller x value. I've got 3 and minus 2 here, so I'll add 2x to both sides. Add 2x, add 2x. So I'll get 5x minus 5 is less than 20. I'll add 5 to both sides now, so 5x is bigger than 25. And then divide by 5, x is bigger than 5. There we are. Moving on to question 2f. Well, x is negative here, so I think the first thing I'll do is I'll add 2x onto both sides. So I'm going to get 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to minus 5. The next thing I'll do is I'll take away 7 from both sides. So 2x is less than or equal to minus 12. And then divide both sides by 2 and you get x is less than minus 6. Moving on to question 2g, first thing I spot is my x is negative. So I will, uh, uh, I will add the 3x onto the other side. Then I will add 19 onto the other side. And when I add 19 onto minus 1, I'll get 18. Then I'll divide by 3 and I'll get 6. So therefore, x is less than or equal to 6. Lovely. Let me just show you something you're not allowed to do. First thing, I'll rewrite out the question. And I think this time maybe I'll add the 1 onto the other side first. So minus 3x is less than or equal to add 1 minus 18. Divide by minus 3 and I get this thing here. Minus 18 divided by minus 3. Two negatives divided by each other gives you a positive and there we are. But that's different to this answer here. So what's gone wrong here? Why is this incorrect and why is this correct? Well if we think about it, if we take a negative on both sides, if we have minus 5 is less than minus 4, which it is, minus 5 is a lower number than minus 4, and I times by minus 1 on both sides, then all of a sudden I've created a rule whereby 5 is less than 4, which is obviously not true. So whenever you divide or times by a negative number on both sides, 
the the rules stop working for rearranging the algebra. So it's always best if you've ever got a negative x amount to move it onto the other side first by adding it onto the other side and then rearranging from there. So that's what I'm just going to recommend in general then. Whenever you've got a negative x, negative x value, add it to the other side and then your rules of algebra just carry on working as normal. So we go at the next one. Oh, tricky next one, one where we've got uh, two inequalities here. Well, actually, exactly the same thing works. You just have to do the same thing to all three sides. You divide by two on all three sides. And you get three is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to nine. Lovely. So that's what you should probably do on the easier ones. Maybe on one like this, you could even do exactly the same. Add seven, add seven, add seven onto all three sides, and you would get uh, 26 is less than or equal to 2x is less than or equal to 42. And then divide everything by two, all three sides, divide all three components by two, divide by two, divide by two, and you get 13 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 21. So that's what you should probably do when you've got three bits on an easier question. Uh, but what do you do when you've got something a bit more difficult like this? Well, when you've got something a bit more difficult like this, the best thing to do is to actually split them up into two separate inequalities. 12 is less than 6 minus 4x, and uh, 6 minus 4x is less than or equal to 22. So for the first part over here, I've just taken this bit, and then for the second bit over here, I've just taken this bit. Okay, let's rearrange this thing here. So I'm going to get add 4x on the other side, 4x, add 12 is less than or equal to 6. And then 4x is less than or equal to minus 6, because you'll take away 12 from both sides. Then you'll divide by 4, and you'll get minus 1.5. So x is less than minus 1.5. Let's now rearrange this side as well. So it's going to be 6 is less than or equal to 4x plus 22. Take away 22 from both sides and you'll get minus 16 is less than or equal to 4x. Divide by 4. Now you're allowed to divide 16 by 4 because the 4 is the number you're dividing by. So you are allowed to divide by 4 here and it's minus 4 is less than or equal to x. So if we swap it round, swap it round, it's x is greater than or equal to minus 4. So now we need to combine these back again. So what we're going to have to do now is actually swap them round and put x in the middle, and it's going to have to be bigger than or equal to minus 4, like that. And then it's also going to have to be less than or equal to minus 1.5. So do you see here what's happened? What we've got here is we've got uh, the pointy bit is still pointing towards minus 4, and the pointy bit is still pointing towards x in relation to minus 1.5. We've just combined the inequalities together uh, into one single inequality. Let's have a go at this one here. We'll again split them up into two separate inequalities. Minus 5 is less than or equal to 1 minus 3x. And on this side here, it will be 1 minus 3x is less than or equal to 10. So add the 3x onto the other side. That's the easiest way of sorting this out. Then add 5 onto the other side. And then divide everything by 3. And we get x is less than 2. Do virtually the same thing here. 10 add 3x. Take away 10 on both sides, you get minus 9 is less than 3x. And then divide by 3, that would be minus 3 is less than or equal to x. So what we'll then do is we'll write minus 3 is less than or equal to x, because that's what it says here. But then x is also less than or equal to 2. So there we are, we've now combined this thing and this thing together into one single inequality expression. Okay, so it's now your turn to have a go at some questions from the worksheet attached in the description of the video. So pause the video, come out of it, 
download the worksheet, have a go at the questions, and then we'll go through and mark them. So let's go through now and mark them. So the first question says, draw a number line from minus 10 to 10, and then draw these six inequalities on them. So first one, I'll draw the first one down at the bottom, so it'll be 4, and colour it in, and it needs to be bigger than 4. So that'll be the first arrow, that'll be arrow A. The next one will be 3, but not including 3, and it's going to be less than 3. So that's the answer to part B. The answer to part C is at minus 5 with the circle coloured in. It needs to be less than minus 5, so it'll be pointing that way. that would be arrow C. D will be up at 8, so down at minus 8 rather. So D will be here. Circle not coloured in, and it needs to be bigger than minus 8, so it needs to point up in that direction. That's arrow D. Arrow E will be in between minus 1, coloured in, and 7, not coloured in. And it'll be a line connecting those two there. And then the last one will be minus 5 with the circle not coloured in and 2 with the line coloured, with the, with the um, circle coloured in and then a line connecting the two there. So that's answer E and that's answer F. Let's now move on to the solving inequalities one. So in this question here, the first thing I would do is take away 3 from both sides. So it's 5x is greater than or equal to 40. Then divide by 5, you get x is bigger than or equal to 8. Moving on to the next one. Take away 16 from both sides first. Take away 16, take away 16. And you get 2x is less than minus 24. And then divide everything by 2, x is less than minus 12. Moving on to the next one. Oh, a division. Cheeky. Let's just times both sides by 5 because we've got a, effectively a divide by 5 here. That's what happens when you've got a fraction. It's effectively divide by. So it's x is bigger than or equal to 15. Lovely. Move on to the next one. Right, negative x. Now, first thing to do would be to move it onto the other side. So we're going to add 2x to both sides. So it's going to be 5 is greater than or equal to 19 add 2x, then take away 19 from both sides, and you get minus 14 is less than or equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2, that is allowed to happen because we're dividing by a positive number here. So that would be minus 7 is greater than or equal to x, so we'll swap it around, just, just put the x first, x is less than or equal to minus 7. Move on to question E. Here the x is negative, so the first thing we should do is add 3x onto both sides. So it's going to be 3x, add 15 is less than or equal to 6. Then take away 15 from both sides. So it's going to be, take away 15, that would be 3x is less than or equal to minus 9, x is less than or equal to minus 3. Moving on to the next one, first thing we'll do is we'll times both sides by 4. Effectively what we've got here is the x plus 3 in some brackets, so we can't touch the plus 3 yet, so we'll times by 4 first, so x plus 3 is less than or equal to 20, because we times by 4 first, then we'll take away 3 from both sides, so it's x is less than or equal to 17. Moving on to the next one, we'll times both sides by 3 first. So that would be 21. Now the x is negative, so we need to make it positive. So it's going to be 9 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 21. Take away 21 from both sides and you'll get minus 12 is greater than or equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2, you get minus 6 is greater than or equal to x. Flip it round for the final answer. It's always good to have the x first on the final answer and flip around the sign as well when you flip around the numbers. Moving on to h, this is an easier one. So in this one here, I'll add 1 to both sides first. Add 1, add 1, add 1. And I will get an answer of 6 is less than or equal to 3x is less than, so less than, because that's the symbol here. You always copy the symbol you use in uh, 21. And then divide everything by 3 on all three sides. So 
So you need to get 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 7. Answering question I. Now this is one where I break it up. Whenever x is negative, my preference is to break it up. Uh, just because it's a lot harder. 17 is less than or equal to 11 minus 2x. Add the 2x onto the other side. Add 17 onto the other side. We get 28. Divide both sides by 2 and we get 14. Okay, on to the next one now. So it would be 11 minus 2x is less than or equal to 15. Add the 2x onto the other side. Take away the 15 onto the other side, you get minus 4. And then divide both sides by 2, you get minus 2. So what we've got here now is minus 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 14. But you can see here this part here appears here and this part here appears here. So we've got one inequality that's representing two inequalities in one go. And moving on to question J, the first thing I do is split them up. So it's going to be four is less than three minus x over two. Times both sides by two, you get eight. Add the x on the other side because it's negative at the moment. And then take away the eight, you get minus five. So x has to be less than minus 5, and on this side, 3 minus x over 2 is less than or equal to 7. So times both sides by 2 first, and you get 14. Uh, add the x on the other side. Take away the 14, and you get minus 11. And then we'll swap this one the other way around, because it's a final answer. So I think the easiest way of combining these two is the smaller one is this one here. So that one will go first. And then less than, less than minus 5. And there we are. That's the answer uh, to question 2J. And there we are, that's the answer to all of the questions from the worksheet. So that was a, it was a pretty quick lesson actually, wasn't it? Hopefully it's made sense as we've gone along through it. And uh, thanks very much for watching.